Okay. So after we acquire data, we're going to want to look at that in post run. So I come up here, I double click on post run. Again, after clicking on this, and post run will open. The first thing to do, otherwise you get yourself very frustrated, and it happens to me all the time, is file, let's select the project folder. And you would select the project folder that we just had created, okay? Uh, but in this instance, since I'm running on a virtual machine, we're going to go to the samples GC. So you wanna make sure you get to the right directory. Now, when I say file, open data file, it opens into that directory. So I'm gonna open up one of the tutorial samples. Okay. So perhaps our run looks like this. We should be so lucky. Uh, the first peak there is probably our solvent and we're gonna say that it is. Okay, then we have three peaks of interest. So over here, uh, I view. First thing I'm gonna do here is put in edit mode here and I'm wiping out my compound table because we're going to start from scratch. Because you won't have that compound table there. In view. Yes. So now, what I typically would do, I mean, this is our first run here, is use our wizard. Click on the wizard. Okay. So here we want to everything calculated by area. Here's the slope. Peak width needs should be small. Uh, it's how wide a peak needs to be, but that's not used as frequently as peak slope. The slope here is also sometimes called the threshold. It's a change in the rise in the baseline at which it says, hey, this is no longer noise. This is actually the start of a peak. So I make this very small, we will see lots of peaks. If I make it very big, you will only see a few peaks. Drift here, this is in instances where you have a baseline that rises over time. So you don't want it to drop down to a flat baseline, a horizontal baseline. You want it to hit the baseline of the rise. So that would be your drift. We're not gonna worry about that right now either. T double, I'm not gonna worry about. Uh, that's if you're running isothermal. And the minimum area is just not to report specific uh, areas below which, you know, small little peaks. We're going to use area, not height. Uh, something else we can use over here, if I choose to, is in a program here. Since I know that this peak here, and also this is a good example to see what fronting looks like, but it's a solvent you expect at the front. So at T0 here, what I may do is turn the integration off. Then at five minutes, I'm gonna turn my integration on. Simulate it, and you can see that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna leave that there. So I'm gonna say next. Okay, so now with the, those previous parameters here, it found four peaks, as you can see. Now, we're gonna say we want this peak you select the peaks you want, and you can see it puts a line over them. And I can magnify this up a little bit so we can see these better. So I say, yeah, I want that peak. Yes, I want that peak. Yes, I want that peak. And any peaks you don't want, you just don't select. And I say, next. What method of quantitation will we be utilizing? In this case here, we'll say external standard but you could also do internal standard or any of the other methods, area normalization, where everything adds up to 100, based purely on area. But the big one is external standard or internal standard. Okay, so let's go with external standard first. And we're gonna say we're gonna be using area, three points of three levels. It should be linear. Whether or not we wanna force it to the origin or not, that's up to you. And we're not going to worry about weighing methods right now and the units, whatever they may be. So I'm going to leave those blanks. I'm not sure what units they'll be. There's something called grouping as well. Uh, what grouping is, is where you can take a group of peaks and treat them as one peak. So perhaps you're analyzing uh, 
some kind of aldehydes, you can just get total aldehydes and just calculate aldehydes, something of that nature. But so I'm going to say next. So here we have window or band. In GC, we always use band because there's going to be so many peaks that the window would open up too far. We'll stick with the default bandwidth right now. You're going to want to use absolute retention time, and we're going to want all peaks. Okay? No updating of retention time for now. Say next. What are my compound names? I can put the names of the compound here. I just call it PK1, PK2, and PK3. <clears throat> now, if for some reason I was using the internal standard, this is where I would let it know which peak is the internal standard. Okay, that's the big difference. When you use internal standards, you got to let it know which peak is the internal standard. Here's my concentration levels. Say maybe it's 5 for this, 4, and 2. And I'm going to assume I made a serial dilution, so I'll make that 10, 8, 4, and make that 8, 16, and 20. Whatever those values may be, I'm just making those up. And then I say finish. So what we did now is we put everything that we had there over here in this method table based on these integration parameters. <clears throat> and we entered, we filled this out. But the, the, the wizard walks us through that. Okay, from view. So what we did now is we have our method set up of how we acquire the data. To that method, now we're adding integration parameters. Then we're adding compound identification and quantitation parameters. Okay, so then I would do from your file save method file as and let's get to the same directory where we were i need to get there uh data project one and save yes so this now is going to save on top of the other parameters the data it adds it adds to the parameters we already created so it's the second step. So again, the other thing that you want to do for sure is after you inject the sample once and you get something that looks reasonable like this, inject a second time just to verify that the retention times aren't shifting over all around. You want to make sure consistency is very, very important. So you may want to inject a second time. Okay. So once we have this part of the method all worked out, then we can get back, go back over and create a batch run. So I'm going to discontinue this portion for now, and we're going to go back into real-time analysis and determine how we would make a batch run.